One of Jesus' closest friends combines the words grace and truth and then contrasts them in a way with the law and Moses that I really enjoy. And he wrote this in um, his gospel. And he said, out of the fullness we have received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Christ Jesus. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is himself God and in his closest relationship with the Father has made him known. My name is Pastor Jim Wallace. I'm at Crossroads International Church in South Attleboro, Massachusetts. And today I want to talk about grace and truth. The law makes demands. It's hard, it's cold, it's unyielding, and it's without mercy. The symbol of, of that today, maybe for your mind, is the tax man, the IRS. If we don't give up what the law requires, we're subject to penalties. Um, um, you know, we, we have this do this and thou shalt live, you know, kind of thing with the IRS. Yet John says the law was given by Moses. Moses did not originate that but he gave it. Moses may disappear, but the law never goes away. It's cold, it's unyielding, it's demanding, and again, it's without mercy. And John says, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Take away Jesus and you take away grace and truth. He is the channel of it. He is the source of it. When John is saying in a section of the law is about to demand, but grace and truth are all about the supply and are designed to meet that demand. And many people think that law and grace are contradictory, that they are opposing principles, but not in the sense in which they originally intended. Law and grace supplement one another. Law makes its demands rightfully and justfully, and no one truly can meet them, to be honest. But grace and truth is given in order to meet that demand. In Exodus 20, there's this amazing account of the of giving of the law on Mount Sinai, the law which came with smoke, thunder, earthquakes, fire, fear, and trembling. But in the next section, we read that the detailed plans for the building of the tabernacle, God's provision is to meet the demands of the law. The tabernacle, tabernacle was a picture of Jesus, like a forerunner, a meeting place where God's demands are fully met in the terms of the sacrifice of blood, a life poured out. So John saw this coming of Jesus and then the fulfillment of that tabernacle. The one who was after me has already been before me. So it is with us. We can say with John, out of his fullness of grace and truth, we, we have all received grace upon grace. And God has a daily supply of grace for us and an abundance of supply of grace for us. And grace is, gener is given with generosity and love and it's reaching out towards us and it's giving itself to us. To those who come to Christ, God's promise is that every day we can get a new supply of his love and a new supply of his grace, and we can know we are loved. We know that we are cherished, protected, and blessed. We are strengthened and kept and supported by his love and grace upon grace, day after day, month upon month, year after year, like the manna to the Israelites in the, in, in the desert. This is, this is the way it was, and God gives us a daily supply of love because we have been loved when we reach out in love to someone else, when we are fully giving uh, and freely receiving, we are fulfilling the law. For the love is fulfilling of the law. And I hope you can find that your grace is in the Lord Jesus Christ and that this gift uh, came upon to live among us, to reveal to us, and to bring to us and to you, to help us walk with with the love of grace and truth every day and just don't ever if there's not anything else you remember from anything i talked about today remember that god's amazing grace transformed the law into a liberating truth are you grasping that ryth rhythm of grace today of truth and truth with love and truth with grace i hope you are and i'll see you next week while we continue our look at grace in our devotion series you take care bye-bye